just don't understand. Can you help me? Nah, of course you can't. You're just a poster. Wait. Hey guys, welcome to Physics of Soccer. Today we're going to be talking about projectile motion followed by momentum and energy. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's start by talking about projectile motion. Here I have a free kick 25 meters from the goal. I need to get it up and over the wall to, and get it into the goal. The wall is 6 feet tall, so I need to get it up to 7 feet high so they can't reach it even if they were to jump. But the question is, how fast do I need to kick it for it to go into the goal? When a ball is flying through the air, it will fly in a straight line until gravity acts upon it. Gravity acts downward, so the only acceleration of the ball is also downward, while the inertia of the ball will cause it to continue moving forward. We will assume that the air resistance in this example is negligible. Let's start to talk about this by creating a force diagram. The ball's forward motion is only maintained by its inertia, which is not a force. Air resistance is negligible, so the only force acting on the ball is gravity. Now let's talk about this in terms of an equation. To find the speed of the ball, we first have to figure out how long the ball will fly through the air, otherwise known as our air time. If we want to find air time, then all we need is the vertical or y component of this example. So if we use the equation change in y is equal to one half of the acceleration times the time, then we can plug in all of our known variables. However, this equation only accounts for the part after the ball reaches its highest point. Since we want the entire arc, we have to multiply our answer by two at the end. We know that the change in y is 7 feet, or 2.13 meters, and that the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. That leaves our unknown variable as time. To solve, we just divide by 9.8 meters per second squared, and then find the square root of both sides. We then multiply that answer by 2 to get the entire arc, which gives us our final answer of 1.32 seconds. That's great! The ball will go over the ball in 1.32 seconds, and the goalie will not have a chance of saving it. If I kick it fast enough. In order for the ball to follow the correct path, I need to kick it at the right speed. I know the ball is exactly 25 meters from the goal, and that it will take 1.32 seconds to go up and over the wall. So if we want to find out how fast I have to kick it in meters per second, we just divide the distance in meters by the time in seconds. So what we do is 25 meters over 1.32 seconds, which gives us 18.9 meters per second, or 42.3 miles per hour. So if I kick it at exactly 18.9 meters per second, then it should just go right into the goal. Let's move on to momentum. I now have a penalty kick 11 meters from the goal. I need to get the ball into the goal within half a second so the goalkeeper doesn't have a chance to save it. So let's try to calculate how hard I have to kick the ball to make that happen. Momentum is defined as a quantity of motion of a moving body. To find this quantity, we simply multiply the object's mass by its velocity, and to find the change in momentum, or impulse, we just do mass times change in velocity. This is also equal to the net force times the change in time. Let's start by calculating the minimum velocity required to make it into the goal. To go 11 meters in 0.5 seconds or less, we do 11 meters over 0.5 seconds and find that the ball has to reach a top speed of at least 22 meters per second. Earlier, I weighed the ball and found out that it has a mass of about 0.43 kilograms. We also know that on average, your foot is in contact with the ball for about 0.023 seconds. Now, using this information, we can find all the variables we need to solve this problem. Our mass is 0.43 kilograms, and the change in velocity is 22 meters per second, because the ball starts at rest, and our change in time is 0.023 seconds, because that is the time it takes for the ball to accelerate to its top speed, as it stops accelerating once it leaves my foot. Now let's plug that into our equation. We start with the net force times the change in time is equal to the mass times change in velocity. Now we just substitute in our values. We divide both sides by 0.023 seconds and find that the minimum net force required for the ball to reach a top speed of at least 22 meters per second is about 411.3 newtons. So if I strike the ball with at least that amount, it should go right into the goal. Now let's talk about energy. There are three main types of energy. Gravitational potential energy, or GPE, kinetic energy, or KE, as well as elastic potential energy, or EPE. All of these energy types use the unit of joules, expressed with the letter J. Now let's say I have a goal kick, and I want to kick the ball as far as I possibly can. To do this, I have to generate as much power and velocity as I possibly can. I had a sandwich before the game, which gave me 700 joules of energy. So the question is, how fast can I kick the ball? 
To solve this, we're going to use the equation for kinetic energy, or Ke equals one half of the mass times the velocity squared. We know that the mass of the ball is still 0.43 kilograms, and that the sandwich I ate before the game gave me 700 joules of energy. Due to the law of conservation of energy, we know that the chemical energy I gained from the sandwich will be completely converted into kinetic energy when I strike the ball. If we just plug in unknown values, we can see that the quantity of velocity squared is unknown. To solve, all we have to do is multiply both sides by 2, and then divide by 0.43 kilograms. We then take the square root of both sides, and find that the top speed of the ball is approximately 57.1 meters per second. Now let's take this one step further. What if I took that same amount of energy from the sandwich and use it to kick the ball straight up? How high would the ball go? We'll use the equation for gravitational potential energy, which is GPE is equal to the ma mass times the force of the Earth times the height. Once again, due to the law of conservation of energy, the chemical energy I gain from eating the sandwich will be completely converted into kinetic energy when I kick the ball. That energy will then be completely converted into gravitational potential energy as it goes higher and higher into the air. Again, we can just plug in our known values, leaving height as the unknown. To solve, we divide both sides by 0.43 kilograms, which is the mass of the ball. We also then divide by 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the force of the Earth, and we find that the maximum height of our ball is 166 meters. That's quite high. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Peace.